Um, today, um, well, yesterday we, we had some um, approximations to, um, to, the, to migration. Um, in a session that was not uh, designed for, um, for talking about um, the migratory uh, issue, um, it was uh, interesting to see how the migration came. Um, as something that it's really uh, in connection with this whole um, um, idea and, and uh, theme of the conference um, uh, of development and ICT. Uh, that means that something is going on um, in the, in the uh, context of migration that makes it especially um, interesting um, to see probably two things. One, um, I believe that uh, in, in uh, migration, migratory contexts are very rich to analyze these transformations that we are looking for. Uh, the fact of having uh, people um, in, in different places makes technologies a key issue. And that's why in, in even if, if we are not um, focusing the whole conference on, on migration, we thought that um, to take the migration as, a, as, a, uh, as an excuse and try to go into these um, uh, realities and see what's going on there, it could be rich for the whole um, re um, reflection for the whole, um, even for the whole process of, of thinking about the connection between development and ICT. But also, of course, for those of you uh, who are interested in, in, in migration, um, we believe that um, there is something at the same time, something going on uh, in this connection between ICT and development um, that makes uh, um, the migratory reality um, uh, changing very much. I mean, it's really uh, something is going on in, the in, in, in immigration that we need, uh, we, the expertise on immigration, we, we need to look at um, and, and this new thing has to do with the use of ICT. Uh, so for both reasons, uh, as an excuse, as an, uh, a focus of interest, we believe that it, it would be rich to focus the second day of the conference on, um, on those issues related to uh, people moving, people moving around. So, uh, well, um, we have today the, uh, the, the presentation, the, the, the uh, keyword speaking, uh, speaker. Um, now it's going to be in the next hour. Um, Ivan Ureta from the University of Lugano at Switzerland. Well, I think that um, his conference is going to be very rich in this idea of framing uh, the, 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 the whole, um, the, the, this, um, this reality uh, of development, migration, and ICT. These three elements, which are not easy to, to relate to each other, I think he has done a very good job on, uh, on trying to explain how these three elements are working and going together. Well, his um, profile as a, an academic and at the same time as someone that has lived for many years uh, very close to, to, uh, uh, to the world of, of, um, of NGOs, and so he knows the, the, the reality of, of migrants in, in, in different countries in Peru especially, so uh, it makes um, his view very, very interesting. So, Ivan, thanks for, for your contribution. Yeah, thank you very much. Good morning, <coughs> everybody. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, actually, migration ICTs, uh, we are living actually in the migration age, uh, where people is on the move, and uh, in a way or another, we have to face and start to think about probably, okay, yeah, migration is not a new issue, it's all as humanity, but probably currently, uh, migratory patterns and so on are, are different, and we have to, to face it, uh, to frame a new uh, th theoretical approaches to to un for to understand better the, this multidisciplinary phenomenon. Uh, yeah, as Adela said before, uh, I combine uh, a mixed profile uh, of working development issues, uh, working closely with uh, rural communities, with migrants in Latin America during four years. Now I'm doing uh, research mainly in, in the Maghreb and the Masrek. So I'm just trying to do these cross-cultural studies just to under understand better how it's going on in different regions of, of, of the world. Uh, and I, ar I arrive indirectly to have an interest between the ICTs and migratory uh, issues uh, because I arrived to, to, to Peru just to work as, as a volunteer for a very small NGO, and I start to see things that probably is I are not very easy to see here. Uh, okay, and, and they start to, to make me reflect a little bit more on the, on the role of the ICTs and the impact of the media regarding uh, migratory intentions and economic performance there, uh, and so on. So my conference today, it's a reflection of many, many years, uh, let's say since 2002 to, uh, to now, uh, of reflections both uh, academically and personal experiences as well. So I titled this conference Connectivity and Social Changes in Migratory Context with a focus on the Maghreb, although I will speak as well about Latin American studies because it was my inspiring model for, for reflecting uh, on migration issues. So as for a sta uh, starting point, I will speak about language, uh, thought, emotions, and actions, and how do they uh, shape a uh, social imaginary. I will speak about migratory intention, migratory culture. Uh, why do people migrate? Uh, and I, I will do a very small, uh, a brief overview on migra th uh, migration theories. Uh, what is the impact of ICTs and the media regarding these new patterns to understand migrations today? And I will do a very simple hypothesis that could be serve as well to trigger off uh, these reflections of new approach in uh, migration studies. Some possible consequences, so I'm not reflecting here uh, about the ICTs are good, ICTs are bad, okay, we Everyone knows that ICT school have very good uh, impact in the sense that, okay, it, it's like the money of an escalpel. You can use an escalpel to operate someone and to rob another one, so it depends on the use. So I, I will concentrate, I will stress much more my attention in possible consequences, especially regarding the main title of the conference today. It's what about for those people which are poorest? Uh, it's not a question of digital divide because uh, between developed countries and developing countries. It's much more between the society in size of these less developed countries. And then I will conclude. <coughs> yeah, so when I started everything, having discussions with my students in Peru, so it, it, it was very fascinating and at the same time quite frustrating to have many expressions. I mean, the thought, the language, and the emotions shape in a way the actions people do. And yeah, uh, you can hear expressions like, oh man, here it's very difficult to go. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to do things. I would like to go abroad. Uh, this kind of massive frustrations so abroad you can do things better here you have many restrictions socially politically economically speaking so 
and this thought and this way of articulating ideas through the language create, in a way, a social imaginary. Uh, and this social imaginary shapes as well the way in which the society performs. And the actions are a consequence of that. So, for example, I, I will take the, the, the definition of social imaginary by Taylor as the way of uh, ordinary people imagine their social surroundings, a way of thinking that is carrying images, stories, and legends, which is shared by a large group of people. So, expressions against myths, beliefs, a common pessimism. Uh, I was teaching some months ago uh, in Tanje, in, in Morocco, in, in, in a business school for, let's say, upper upper middle mid upper class uh, people and they thought yeah but in in, in spain the the, the the average salary is three three thousand euro really you think so uh yeah no 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 it's, it's not <laughs> but they had this idea of wealthness of richness of uh, living in Europe, it's much better than doing here. Uh, this idea of El Dorado, with its share among, I mean, of lower lower classes, middle classes, upper classes. So it's it's a it's a a shared a, a shared belief, and this converges at the same time in a kind of social despondency. So I'm reflecting especially in, my in, 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 in highly stressed stress, uh, migration countries where there exists a migratory culture. And I will explain a little bit more what I intend for um, migratory culture. So uh, given that I was teaching in faculties of economy, uh, of economics and business, it was quite shocking to, s to see and to witness how students had an intention to develop their own business. So it's supposed that they had some entrepreneurial attitudes towards the future of themselves there in their country. But at the same time, through their expressions through their migratory intention. I will explain late, uh, later on what uh, I intend for migratory intention. So what does it really mean in terms of, okay, uh, I'm studying economics, I'm studying business, for what? Is fashion, I'm really convinced of it. Is my plan to develop some entrepreneurial activities is consistent? Uh, let's see. What's migratory intention? Okay, so since the beginning, I thought that could be interesting to think about how the people were, um, let's say, feeling their situation in their countries, and what <coughs> at what uh, at what extent they were willing to migrate. And I started to do very simple surveys through first through, through interviews, then more structured surveys, just to know <coughs> how many people would migrate. And it was an overwhelming presence of people who decide to migrate above the 80% of the intentions. Uh, wow, and, uh, and you say, imagine you have a company, you have an enterprise, and the eighty percent of your employee of your employers want to go. So it, it's it's it, it, for for your enterprise it could be very very difficult to, to, to face the future. It was almost impossible. So that metaphor for a company for an enterprise could serve as well for a country. And well, I think that in that case, migratory intention it's a it's a, it's a soft indicator because. It's very dynamic and it's viable, and it has inside many intensities. 
and these intensities variates as well with, with with experiences with how it's going on in your in, in your daily life and yeah you, you you can see how people would like to go abroad definitely which is not the largest number of people uh, the largest number of people having a kind of migratory intentions want to go abroad temporarily um, not to be based definitely in the country just say for for study for, for, for develop their studies or for work for a period of time to gather some money to come back and to uh, set up some uh, entrepreneurial activities in their origin countries uh, and so on so it's very very variable but at the same time expresses an intention it's a social construction in which an individual project him or herself beyond the boundaries of his country of origin. So since the beginning, I, 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 I should stress that migratory intention, that the migratory plan, that migration issues are mainly a question of imagination. It's a question of uh, creation of a certain um, mental predisposition to go or to remain. Uh, this migratory intention affects and is affected by the environment, by the social imaginary. It takes from this and from, and from, and from, from many, many sources. And because of social, political and economic context as well. So it's lifelong. Uh, migration intention for sure is the main driving factor regarding migratory plan. So your migratory intention starts to be uh, stronger as far as you are more and more convinced to go abroad. So and, and this has as well a huge socioeconomic impact. The migratory intention, I, 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 I will criticize here the rational choice theory uh, because not always behind the migratory plan exists a real let's say this uh, cost-benefit analyze, uh, sometimes intervene uh, not rational motivations to impulse, to push, push people to, 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 go, to go away. Uh, it go I that, that, that critic uh, goes directly against the traditional theories of, of the economic uh, approach uh, to, um, to, to, to migration issues. And the migratory culture is the extreme situation of all this. Um, when the social imaginary in a certain society thinks that doing the life outside is better than remain here, it's very strong. I mean, we are facing a case of migratory culture. So for example, in Morocco, with the uh, migration, it's, it's, it's huge. Uh, you can ask, I, 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 was, I was reading elsewhere that someone was asking a, a, a very young guy, what do you like to do when you, are when you are older? I would like to be a migrant. So it's, it's very inside of, 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 of people. Um, and uh, and it, it could cause a episodes of social conflicts within these societies and has for sure an impact at the socioeconomic level as well. So why do people migrate? So there are many, 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 many theories struggling with this intention to discover why people migrate, what are push and pull factors that uh, motivate people to, 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 to go abroad. And there for um, at least four main groups of theories, the economic theories, what are stressing the importance of push, pull factors, where the quality of life perhaps is the main driving factor in um, impulsing people to go abroad, and where the uh, rational choice theory uh, remains as common denominator. But uh, I, I will I, I, I will I will quote here the, the this famous Amartya paper, those mm -hmm. rational fools where just in the, in the 70s stressed that perhaps the rational choice theory is not a, a very satis satisfactory 
way to explain economic decisions. Uh, on the other hand, there is the historic, uh, historic structural approach, which is mainly based on Marxian's uh, theory, uh, which relates with center periphery, asymmetry, where migration is uh, understood like a cheap labor force. Uh, we have here, for example, Saskia Assassin's works and so on. So, uh, these main two groups of theories uh, were th perhaps the main uh, ways to explain, so some, some uh, starting from the, the migration theories of Rabenstein and, and, and so on, to explain uh, cause-effects phenomenon uh, for, 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 for explaining migration. Currently, today, uh, these methods are not satisfactory and we need to take into consideration broader aspects to understand better what is going on regarding migration issues. Um, these academic efforts uh, related with migration si uh, systems theories, with uh, links political economy, the law, the interstate relationships, social networks, and the migratory industry. So it's a very interdisciplinary way to face the study of migration issues. And I think that currently we're, uh, we are really uh, experiencing this migration age. It's necessary to use uh, interdisciplinary tools to understand what's going on. That's economics, sociology, anthropology, uh, psychology as well. So we realized yesterday, so it's a very transversal issue. So at the same, at, at, at the end of the day, we are we are dealing with int uh, personal motivations, with intentions, where perhaps you are in love with someone and you are very motivated to go abroad, and you I don't know you want to study, you want to go abroad to have more money working. It's plenty of, of reasons to behind the the, the the migratory decision. And fourth one is the transnationalism where the main concept here is the mobility, where the general con context is the deterritorialization de of nation states. Uh, perhaps here intervenes very strongly the ICTs, the role of the media, and, and so on. Um, yeah, it, it could be interesting to say as well who migrate and it's not the poorest people who migrate. So if we see, um, if we analyzed UN or IOM statistics regarding migration flows worldwide, we have figures that uh, reveals that the biggest chunk of people migrating, mig uh, migrating in the world belongs to the sphere of developed countries, not developing countries. So that means that if you're a migrant, if you want to migrate, it f for, for me, it's like an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur, like a migrant, have to have information, have to have economic and financial resources, have to have a plan, have to have uh, a real intention to do something, determination so it's unlikely the poorest people in developing countries can afford the, a migratory plan so it's it's a question of who migrate really in these countries are not the poorest uh migration is not a new topic is <laughs> as as the human humanity is um In reviewing history, we saw that, for example, the migration hump between the mid-1850s uh, uh, to the First World War, uh, in terms of migrants, the numbers are very similar as today. So we are experiencing a huge migration flows today, but are not unique in the history. So in that period during migration hump, the figures are very, very 
closed than are today. Uh, so perhaps the newest concept to understand migration today is the fact of mobility, it's people moving around. At the same time, perhaps migratory patterns are changing because a wide array of new factors, the globalization, communication systems, the technology. Here, for, ex for example, could be uh, controversial to uh, speak about castles theories and guidance, where castles say that, for example, okay, okay, it says we are living in, 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 in space of, of flows, but at the same time, guidance say that, okay, but migratory mi migration always existed and communication systems existed as well. So uh, where, where are we standing? Castle says that for sure uh, ICTs and new technologies for communication uh, do not create new networks but reinforce existing networks. This is an, an interesting idea to, to have into consideration. Just to summarize uh, what I'm saying uh, till now, I, I, I should stress that migration, okay, is not a new phenomenon. It's a very old one, but has new social, economy, uh, political, technological factors that are intervening in shaping new migratory flows. Okay, what's the hypothesis? It's very, it seems silly, but ICT might have a direct impact in shaping migration intentions and migratory culture. Well, uh, we are really in a starting point studying the impact and the role of ICTs regarding social complexity and the impact of ICT and the media in migratory context. Few works have been done till now connecting these variables. For example, one of the main uh, scholars doing migration research is King, Russell King, at the University of Sussex. Uh, in the 2001, he brought, uh, he edited actually a book raising this question, at what, at, at what extent are ICTs and the media shaping and um, creating new ways to understanding and to approach migration studies. Uh, media, my media and, uh, and I put between uh, in a bracket as well, uh, the ICTs may intervene in the migration process in three ways. First, images transmitted from destination countries may be an important source of information for potential migrants. It can act as an important factor stimulating migrants to move. So, seems very logical that you are in a, developed in a, de in a developing country where probably there's a lack of infrastructure, of cultural life, uh, vibrance uh, in, in, in the terms of we are understanding vibrant life in our societies. And they are receiving these massive informations from northern countries. So I'll let's say it's, uh, it's, it, it could seem sandwiched that those people that are receiving and they are being bombed by a lot of information from the north could uh, be tempted to go ab abroad. Is that true? Let's say, so uh, we did uh, this year a conference in Lugano uh, about this, 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 this question and taking into consideration the, the, two the second and the third uh, point that uh, King is pointed out here. Um, just to know up to what extent um, the ICTs and the media are influencing and uh, impacting in destinations in, 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 in origin countries regarding migratory intentions, how the media and ICTs are treating uh, migrants in receiving countries and in transit countries and so on. But let, let, putting aside this, 
I will concentrate this presentation in the first uh, point. Well, Morocco. It's uh, it's uh, th this, uh, this this picture has been taken very close to to Casablanca. If you are approaching Casablanca, you see very nice buildings, very posh neighborhoods, plenty of these satellite dishes like most rooms sniffing information everywhere. Uh, and you go with the, with the bus, ta, 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 and you have one stop here. And you see in front of, of you this. It's a slum. Um, very poor. But the roofs <laughs> are plenty of these satellite di uh, dishes. So information is arriving there. And it's known, that for example, in the, in the Maghreb, the television is switched on very early in the morning, the switch off very late in the night. So almost the whole day, the TV is operating and people is receiving that information. So especially uh, women, we have a, a more intense life inside the household, inside the, inside the house. Uh, it's it, it is very interesting. So I have here question and uh, what is going on here? What about these people who is receiving this massive information? How does it impact? Okay, let's go. Internet in the world, so they are th these are statistics for the internet world st statistics for June 2009. And I will concentrate uh, my, my interest in Africa and the Middle East because I'm mainly working in, in Northern Africa, the Maghreb and the Masrek in the Middle East. And um, the, the, the study period here uh, started from uh, 2000 onwards, arriving to 2009. And it's interesting how uh, the, the, the user's growth, especially in, those in these two underlying countries, for example, in Africa, the user's growth inside this period is 1,359%. This is massive. And in the Middle East, it's almost the same, just one less, eh, one point less. It's, it's, the, it's the highest in the region. But at the same time, the penetration uh, in the population is not very high. In Africa, it's 6.7%. Uh, in the Middle East, it's 23.7%. So we are still at the beginning of the phenomenon. That okay, the, the, the user's growth is experiencing a very uh, strong trend, but at the same time, the penetration within the population is uh, still low. Uh, what does it mean? So it is almost the, the, the same. Well, uh, within the Africa top 10 internet countries, we have three countries situated in the Maghreb, we are present here in this, uh, in this image, and it's Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia. Uh, it's very interesting, of course, just to say how these Maghreb countries uh, are here top in uh, this, uh, this, this statistic. Uh, for me, it, it, it was very nice. It, it is very nice considering that they are migratory, migratory context. Just to test up to what extent are ICTs and the impacting in those realities. So surveys. I start to work uh, on the ma in, 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 in specifically, specifically in, in Maghreb since uh, 2008, but taking of course, into consideration the experience I gathered when I was working in Latin America. So in a way, I was testing and retesting the methodology I used in Latin America to discover or to approach uh, this, 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 uh, the, the, these things uh, I'm commenting now. And the first, the first one uh, was about a migration intention, education, and entrepreneurship. Uh, it was the first, uh, the first uh, survey I, I, I did, and then I did another one on migration intention, media diet, media diet or internet diet, and the ICT influence. 
and this migratory intention. Uh, I, I test, I test retest methodology. Uh, they were uh, university students belonging to private and uh, public institutions from urban and semi-urban areas, uh, students of business and administration or economics. The countries were Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia. And I did traditional surveys, but uh, then I used uh, this tool of Google to uh, set up surveys to uh, deliver among people. I, I, I had some difficulties to wi with the, 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 the second block of, of surveys because uh, I arrived just a few days before Ramadan <laughs> and it was quite difficult to, to, to get uh, fluent uh, responses to, to, to the surveys. A anyway, it was, I it was uh, interesting. And the language used both French and Arabic. <coughs> Arabic. I, I don't know. I'm not fluent in Arabic, so I have, <laughs> in that sense, a, a, a collaborator who is helping me to to do it. So relevant findings for the first survey. Well, yeah, you are a student of economics or business administration, so you have an intention to do something productive for your country. So it seems that it's fa it's very fashionable. In these countries, for example, in Peru, the number of people studying, studying or, or, or reading economy and business is massive. A lot of people is, 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 is studying these this disciplines. And my tricky question was for how many of out of you would like to be entrepreneurs? And almost 100% wanted to be entrepreneurs. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing business studies. I'm really committed with doing something by myself. For, uh, but at the same time, I prepare the second part of the survey to test which, which was the migratory intention, just to know uh, to what extent the willingness to be entrepreneurs was related with their desire to remain in the country to develop an, an enterprise. Yeah, and 75% would like to, mi to migrate. So how could you be interested in doing business and develop your uh, enterprise, but at the same time you are really willing to go outside? So it's not very consistent. Uh, yeah, of course, there are many, many, many nuances here that it could be possible to raise. Um, by as for uh, pushing factors, there are social injustice, economic instability, and social despondency. Okay, this is an anecdote just to contextualize a little bit the whole. As for the second survey, uh, I was much more interested in, 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 in knowing how the ICTs and the media were impacting in um, migratory intentions. Uh, I started to to ask uh, about the internet and, 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 and media diet, and the 81.25% uh, use internet or mobile phones over the last five years. 43.75% uh, surf four or more hours daily and every day. So it's it's a good number of hours every day, and the thirty-seven point five percent two three hours daily. The sixty-eight point seventy-five percent are connecting uh, from the the, the homes. Uh, Twelve point five from cyber cafes. Uh, this is interesting as well. Uh, as, as for the internet penetration, perhaps these uh, university students had connections, uh, the homes, uh <coughs> and it was interesting to know uh, for what purposes do they use internet? S for work, uh, for job seeking, uh, for what? So the fifty percent start by opening the email. Twenty dot a po point uh, eighty three Google and six point twenty five social networks. As for the social networks, 
I mean Twitter, Facebook, uh, High Five, uh, the 64.58% consider that social networks are mainly to keep in touch with friends, family, and for leisure. But the 35.42% thinks that social networks can be very useful to launch social initiatives and to improve social fabric. So here we have something which goes beyond the laser. So perhaps uh, people is considering that these technologies are useful as well to fight against some injustices of uh, in, in, the, in, in the society and to try to improve how uh, things going on. Uh, I asked them if, if what if would happen if they could not have access to these new technologies of information and communication. And almost everybody said that they could not stop using ICTs because it would be like to be in total isolation. So the ICTs, the use of the internet, of mobile phones for, the, uh, for, for this group of people, for this sample, has been in side. The people is, uh, has assumed their role and the importance of these technologies in their daily lives and they will feel like being I isolated if they don't use these technologies. Well, now as for migration intention, it is, it, this is very interesting. Uh, the 39.58% 30 uh, thinks that ICTs do not trigger their desires to, ma to migrate because they have information about good and bad aspects of living abroad. So the hypothesis uh, starts to be a little bit under a question. Under uh, it, it, it's necessary to, to, to revisit the, the, the hypothesis here. So they consider that ICTs can inform them as well about the good and the bad things abroad. So they're assuming that, in a way, they are not really impacted or influenced by ICTs to go abroad. On the other hand, the uh, 81.22, the last, the last line, uh, percent had a variable migratory intention, both to go away permanently, temporarily, or to do it sooner or later. So the migratory intention in that context for these uh, students is very high. It's 81.22%. Uh, more than, than a half recognize that internet will be very useful to get, to get information once they decide to migrate. Uh, well, what does it mean in, in, in a general context? And I'm starting now to, 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 to wrap up a little bit. Uh, cyber spy, the cyberspace, the world, the open world, the real or the virtual world. I can have a migratory intention This does not mean that I will migrate sooner or later, but I have this intention. But once I have decided to go, to go abroad, I have to face a good number of restrictions. And all we know since uh, September 11, and Madrid bombings, London bombings, and so on, how the migratory policies policies in the European Union have been evolved. They are punishing migration under excuses of security, terrorism, and so on. And you perhaps could have serious difficulties to go and to concrete the mi to your migratory plan. So you have a passport that blocks you as far as you are going to the border 
to go to another country. Is for, for, for example, in, in the Tunisian case, it's, it, it's very interesting. I, I was doing some uh, s s interviews there. And in Tunisia, it, and I, I, I guess in many other countries, uh, the government is punishing young migration and they cannot go abroad. And they are using alternative, let's say, alternative channels to get visas by paying function, uh, people working in embassies a certain amount of money to get the visa, uh, which range from 2,500 euros to 5,000 euros if you, go if you want to go to Canada, for example. So there's a business which belongs to this uh, migratory industry as well. So on one hand, we are signing free trade agreements. We know that in 2010, the treatment of Agadir will be put in force. Uh, we are trying to develop this kind of regional integration through, I don't know, for example, the Barcelona process, uh, with the fourth basket about migration issues. But at the same time, we are blocking migration, we are punishing migration, we are punishing migrants. And this is very interesting. The, uh, the article number 13 slash 2 of the UN declaration would say that everyone has the right to leave any country, including his own, and to return to his country. Okay. But not everybody can migrate. So this big bunch of people, this 80% of people who decide or would like to migrate for working, for studying, for your reunification purposes, are in a way having very strong difficulties to do, uh, to uh, put into force their, their plans. Uh, so the poorest people cannot migrate because they cannot afford this uh, migratory process. But on the contrary, through the internet, this right to migrate is permit and enhance. It's a metaphor in a way, but it's not really a metaphor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, a recent works of Shen Yan, Jipin, and Ling are suggesting cyber migration of those who are spending a lot of hours in their, uh, of their lives surfing in the internet for weather of purposes. Uh, I, 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 I'm calling it on-site migration. On-site migration means that an individual is in a develop developing country, is surfing in, in, in the net, in a way is has an open door to uh, this open space. Uh, and at the same time, it becomes a transition space. So uh, your password or your login in is like a temporary visa that you have uh, to be inside, to, to be in contact with this open space, with this open uh, world. And these several hours spending in surfing the internet in, uh, for, for many purposes, I, I, I'm stressed, could signify as well in a kind of cyber brain drain. It, it, it's, it's a concept that could be, and, and I would like to, 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 to go on to, to to, to explain and to discuss, because it's I, I'm just starting to, to, to think about it, and I, I, I would like to have some inputs and feedbacks. And this for sure has a, an impact at the level, at, at socioeconomic level. I'm taking here and adapting the, the a, a model of uh, Daniel Kahneman, uh, who was writing about the attention and effort as a venomy, uh, which is, um, must take into consideration when an individual wants to do a plan. Uh, I adapt here for two purposes, to remain in the country or to migrate abroad. So we have a certain amount of, of energy, of attention and effort that we put in a specific activities of our daily lives. For example, if we are developing our own, our own enterprise, we are 
using massively our attention and effort to being very focused to develop these economic activities. Conversely, if we are thinking of going abroad to migrate, we are moving this energy, this attention and effort to concrete the plan and to finally be able to, to, to migrate. So it has for, 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 for developing issues in these countries where the migratory culture is huge, this scheme, this uh, metaphor of this descriptive way to understand this possible way of acting and thinking, it could be quite useful. Um, wrapping up, migratory intention doesn't mean migration per se. It is a mental predisposition, more or less intense, which may but not always become migration. ICTs can help or influence those who really want to migrate. So uh, the hypothesis at the beginning was the ICTs and the media are impacting and are for sure shaping are and impulsing people to go abroad. But I don't, I, I don't think that is, is completely true because at, this, uh, at the end of the day, there are more people who won't migrate than the people who really migrate at the end of the day. Uh, so the ICTs could help or could influence or could impact more in those who are really willing to go abroad than those who, has, who have, for example, a, a weak uh, intention to, to, to do it. Uh, at the same time, there are these migration policies and policy restrictions blocking migration, and this could create frustrations and emotional costs. So uh, in February, I, I was required by the, by the United, St the United uh, Nations, the Human Development Report of, of, of this year is uh, on migration. And uh, I received an email to, 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 to write a paper for, for this the report about the economic and financial cost of migration. Uh, I start to do a brief introduction about the economic and financial cost of migration, but I think that a bigger, the emotional costs of, migra of, 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 of in, in, in the migratory process, and I stress it. Yeah, and I will stop. Uh, yeah, so that can uh, provoke social conflicts among different uh, groups inside of these societies, those who can afford the migration process, those who cannot afford the migration process, and unsigned migration can be an exit for many of those people. But the discussion is open and comments very welcome. Thank you very much.